Hello everybody, Jerry Measley here for Scale Model Podcast in association with Starship Modeler. I'm going to show you some basics on resin casting. These are very basic techniques designed to replace parts that you uh, may have lost one part and have to reproduce it. You may have a piece like this that you want to uh, test some techniques on but don't want to do that on the uh, original piece yet. You may find components that uh, you really like the shape of. Um, but are made out of something that you can't use, say wood or or a uh, or a plastic that won't hold paint, that sort of thing. Um, or you just want to do uh, some parts of your own, modify them, and then make them uh, uh, out of resin. This is going to be a surface cast mold here uh, with these amazing mold putty. You, there's uh, several different versions of this around you can get. Um, it's two part equal roughly equal volume um, and then you mix them up and you make a mold out of it you get about a half hour of working time with that so it's plenty of time let me get set up I'm gonna get two equal parts out my little spatula here should probably back that in. you won't need a lot Clean your thing up between times. That looks about right. I'm just cleaning it with some water here. I'll probably take some alcohol to it later. And I'm going to mix. You see there are two different colors, so you can tell when they're easily mixed. And just like epoxy putty, once you think you're fully mixed, mix it for a little while longer. I'll show you a couple of the tricks I use. Just keep folding it over, folding it over. One of the things I do when, I, when I'm going to make this, because I'm essentially going to make a little ball or disc out of it, is I, I roll it two different directions. That should help get rid of any crease lines, that sort of thing. It might be a little weak spots. Not that this mold is going to see any real stresses. And then give it a roll, make it into a nice little Nice little silicone ball. I like to flatten it just a little bit first. So I'm going to use a second cup, flatten it a little bit. And take this piece, which is the visor out of the Gabriel kit from John Moscato. Um, it's still got the pore stub on it. That is fine for this. I'm going to place it on top here and we're going to gently press down until it is sunken down in there and you got enough of a lip around it um, that it acts as a well and a sharp demarcation for the part and then you're just going to set it aside for an hour or so until it uh, until that silicone cures that's it for a part like that. That works fine for pieces that have very little detail on them, like these are mostly raised detail. It'll work okay for that. For something like this instrument panel, um, it does not work that well. Those, that, those instrument bezels don't sit in too well, um, don't fill in, so we're gonna show a different technique for that where you'll be using a real two-part mold rubber and that'll be continuing here in a few minutes. Hi everybody. For resin casting you can buy these little kits from SmoothOn. SmoothOn does a great job. 
Um, they have various different resins and various different rubbers designed for your home use. Um, you want to get ones that, uh, if you're doing it at home, are essentially a one-to-one -one by volume. Uh, they're pretty forgiving that way as long as you get it pretty close. Uh, you can get these kits through some art stores. Uh, I, you know, Blix carries some of these. Um, some of the other ones may. Uh, you can go directly to Smooth On. You can go to places like, I think, Micromark and um, uh, Model Expo. Those sort of places may carry them as well. Um, they have various different things. Uh, this, this one's for Smoothcast 325, which is kind of a sl relatively slow curing uh, resin. Pot Life, it'll tell you right here, 2.5 minutes, that gives you two and a half minutes of mix time when the stuff is fresh. As it gets older, that shortens up. And cure time, 10 minutes. That's, yeah, you know, cure time is, is uh, kind of variable. What I'm going to be working with is a product they make called Rebound. And they say it's a brushable silicone uh, rubber. And this is designed to be brushed over a piece. It's pretty thick to start with. And um, that way you can get down into details and such. Or it, uh, it's thick enough to be put over a surface detail. Um, say you have a piece of woodwork or something in your house and one part of one side's damaged but there's identical pieces somewhere else that's something that you can do um, and make out a resin and then fit it in place um, with those you're going to want to make sure you prepare the surface correctly and the smooth on has videos that show you all this kind of stuff you can see I'll show you a couple things here uh, this is a, a vertical stabilizer or rather horizontal stabilizer for a plane that was lost so I cast the other side uh, and then made a mold and was able to pull that out. The blue stuff is this rebound and the yellow is the uh, mold putty. So I brushed it over the stabilizer and then wrapped it around in the mold putty. Um, same with this one. I brushed the the uh, rebound into the uh, into the detail parts of it and then finished it with this uh, cheaper uh, mold putty. You can use this stuff for an entire mold. It's a little soft, um, but as long as it's not something you have to do a lot of uh, casting with, it's, it, it's fine. Uh, this uh, yellow stuff is stiffer. If I was making a two-part mold, I wouldn't be using this, but I might be using this for the detail parts of that two-part mold and then use a, a stiffer rubber for the rest of it. You want to make sure these things are mixed well. They don't shake, so you have to use something like your craft sticks. Um, if you've got a nice spatula or something that you can clean up in between, you can do that too. I don't have a lot left in here, but I gave it a good stir a couple days ago. It will settle out. Remember, these, resin, uh, these rubbers will have uh, curing agents in them. Uh, these ones are, I think, platinum catalyzed. They could be tin catalyzed. And sometimes that stuff very, very slowly sinks to the bottom. And this had a bunch of stuff stuck to the bottom on these ones. So I'm ma just making sure I mix it up. Yeah, these are still in pretty good shape. So that's nice. Ah, this has got a little chunky in the bottom. This part might be the, the part with the catalyst. The other part might not have it. So if you're familiar with working with uh, two-part epoxies, this kind of stuff will be fairly intuitive to you. It just uh, won't get as hard. You can actually use two-part epoxies as a mold too if you want. Um, there are tricks to that. Maybe I'll do a video on that one of these days. Okay, give that a good stir. And I'm going to pause again and grab my pieces and uh, go from there. Okay, this stuff is a molding clay. Um, a lot of standard modeling clays have, I think, a sulfur content that screws with the uh, molding rubber. And this was made 
for building your two-part molds. Uh, clay, you'll hear someone say claying it up. Uh, that's that's what that is. You lay the part in and put it in. You make it really nice. Um, you can buy this wherever you buy the uh, the molds is materials as well. Um, you don't absolutely need it. There are other materials that will work. I tried mounting tape a couple times, and then apparently the silicone um, is either in the adhesive or the tape itself, and that bonded to the silicone rubber, and it was a disaster. So don't do that. Um, it's also really messy stuff, so be a little careful. You can use blue tack as well, and I'll probably use it for that. But for this, this is the top of a, um, a highlighter, and it's a great shape. It's really cool. I've wanted to make a mold for this for a while. It's a little tall, so I had to find another little container that, uh, that I could put it in. Um, so I'm going to put a little mold material in the bottom of that. It's not very tacky, but I just need it to be stable um, when I finally put it in there, so I'm going to put it in the middle. This is a little bigger than I would like, but it's tall enough. Uh, got that one. I've also got this instrument panel. I'll show you this again. Um, let me pause that. Okay. Standard hobby um, poster tack, uh, blue tack, whatever you want to call it useful stuff to have around. On this one I'm just going to put a tiny amount on the back here. If you wonder what that bizarre noise is, that's our Malamute sneezing. Those are mighty sneezes. I'm going to place it in the bottom here, like so, just to keep it stable and that'll eventually make our mold. Um, I'm going to now Mix rubber, equal parts. And uh, this can get a little messy. So I should probably probably do it over a towel here. These are just little souffle cups. You can get them from restaurant supply places. That sort of thing. Um, there are a whole bunch of different sizes of them. You buy a, a, a container of them and they will last you literally forever. Stuff is nice and viscous. And part two. And the idea is to get roughly the same volume of both time, both sides here. It's fine to eyeball them because they're not that critical. Oops, that's a little too much. Darn it. Those look roughly the same. Maybe it's a little more. Side. side. Grab a larger uh, container to put them in to mix it in. And again, these are two, two different colors, so you can see um, if you're mixing it efficiently or not. Since 
since I'm throwing these away anyway, I'm, I'll use the same stick. You have pl generally have plenty of time with these rubbers. They don't cure that quickly. And you can see when you're mixing it how the two sides go in. I like these are clear cups so you can see that you've you've got to really scrape these bottom areas pretty nicely. And I'll show you other tricks for that. If you were doing real mold work, you, you would want to uh, be careful with your, your bubbles, and then you're going to hit it with a vacuum anyway. But I'm not going to do that on this. I don't need to. Uh, this stuff releases its bubbles pretty well on its own. And we're going to be brushing thin layers over these parts, uh, which will also help. What I am going to do though is grab a second cup of this size. Because we want to make sure that these are fully cured. There's no bits and pieces left over of uh, local concentrations. So I'm going to tip it out into this other cup. Get rid of these. Grab another stick, a clean stick, and mix it some more. I do the same exact thing with resin, I'll show you that later on. Uh, but resin is less viscous and cures faster, so you gotta move more quickly. Okay, so that's nice and ready. I'm going to switch camera positions and go for that. Okay. So we're going to have a cheap disposable brush. This brush will be ruined. Don't use anything you want to keep for any length of time. I've got my buddy here. My silicone rubber mold. And this is the uh, Decal panel, uh, the instrument panel from Ravel's Mark II Spitfire. It's actually the Iron Maiden edition one, uh, but it's the same as their others. You can pick up some mold material, brush it on, and this lets you work it down into the details. So you're going to dab, you're going to smear, you're going to swirl. Uh, if you don't put much on to start with, it'll actually let you see. Um, that it's sinking down into those details. And this was enough uh, recessed details that that mold putty did not make a good mold. So I had to resort to this stuff. I uh, probably should have realized that from the start. But we're just going to brush it over the surface. You can see how nice and viscous that is. It will really um, hold its place. I'll just do the whole thing. Uh, it doesn't matter if it kind of goes off the edge. Uh, don't worry about that. You can clean that up later on if you, uh, when you're about to pour your uh, your resin into the mold. A little more there. 
all you really need with this is the skin. Um, now, if you were going to make a whole mold out of this material, once you're at this point, you could just pour it over and uh, be done with it. But I'm going to set that aside to cure. And then I'm going to look at this piece. Um, there's a hole. This is a pen cap, so it's got breathing holes down inside. I don't think that's going to be a problem for this stuff. But all of those recessed details are why you need to do something like this unless you have a vacuum uh, and you can actually make a real uh, like a two-part mold out of it but I'm just gonna do a surface mold I'm gonna work some down into it now I'm gonna coat the whole inside of this thing getting down in there I may need to go get a toothpick for that or a uh, or a different tool I don't think the brush can get down in there. But the important thing is to just get it, get a coat of it in there. You don't want voids. Yeah, it looks like I need something else. Here we go, I'll just grab a sculpting tool. I thought this thing had a great shape, would make a great and really nice looking intake uh, for an air breather of some sort. Or sort of a wave motion gun sort of look to it too. That's looking good. It's getting down in there. Oh, found an air bubble. Great. This is the time to find it instead of later on when you uh, try to cast. All right, that looks great, I think, or at least good enough. Yuck. Going to place it in here. Now that bottom is sealed off, there's no air coming through. Get back down in there once more. Some more, some more rubber down in there. I'm going to fill the entire top of this with uh, with rubber as much as I can. And then I'm going to pour it in. Hope you can see that well enough. Make sure that gets down in there. You can see some bubbles kind of popping out of it. That's perfect. Um, you got two options now. 
you can prop this up once this is all full of the of the silicone you can prop it up like this and let it cure and then continue on uh, but since I have all of this mold here yeah you see a nice little void there a um, rather a bubble there since I have the rubber remaining I'm just gonna pour that over um, and start building the entire mold out of this stuff and by pouring it over the piece you're just gonna coat that entire piece with it uh, whether it's a a full coat or not it doesn't matter uh, it'll just be there and be able to bond later on this this sort of material will bond to itself uh, the yellow stuff the uh, the kneading need a mold sort of product that'll bond to this as well uh, I've got some pieces that are a couple years old uh, that are still bonded pretty well but I've got pieces that are like five years old and they have started debonding from each other the yellow and the blue here so for home use it's fine you don't you're not going to keep this stuff forever so there we go that is the mold in progress pouring down like a candle like a wax candle um, that way it'll help it too uh, it'll kind of work itself down in uh, then this just has to cure um, it's probably this stuff's could probably got to cure a few hours uh, then I'll come back and I'll fill the rest of this mold box with the uh, yeah with the rebound uh, since that's the only two-part rubber I have right now um, I'm looking forward to see how this looks um, ideally with a piece like this that's wider at the bottom than the top you'd probably want to make a two-part mold but I think I can get away with doing as a cut mold to, to relieve that pressure and pop the piece out. We'll find out. You can see the uh, cockpit, uh, the instrument panel is looking pretty good. That's sitting down in there. That's going to be a good mold. The visor, same way. I probably could have pushed that down a little bit farther, but I think for our use, um, this will be fine. And there's other ways you can uh, work with it as well. So. That's end of part one of this. Part two will be um, actually pouring um, resin into these molds. Again, uh, for the Scale Model Podcast, uh, in association with Starship Modeler, this has been Terry Measley, uh, trying to take a little mystery out of uh, making molds. All right, changing plans once again. I'm not happy how these, these are turning out. Um, that probably works well enough for Tony's point um, to be able to get in there and um, make a similar <clears throat> make a similar piece to this, and uh, then try your painting on it. But if you really want to make a replacement piece, that's not going to work for you. So I'm going to show you how to do a simple clay up. This is that modeling clay, not modeling clay. Sorry, molding clay. I'm going to. Insert it to the bottom here of this little souffle cup. Now again, the point of this stuff is that it does not interact badly with the uh, um, with the rubber. And in this case, we're going to put it face side up, like the, like so, and then we're going to build up around it with the clay to get it right up to the point right up to the piece so just at the edge of the piece underneath it this is a simple surface way to do it and remember when it's, when you pour the rubber it's going to be a reverse mold on that so this will actually be down inside farther 
uh, so it acts as its own well. Now, obviously, when when John did this, hi everybody. I was not happy with how the surface mold turned out on this, um, but to be honest, you don't really. If you're going to use a two-part rubber like this one, a surface mold is the way to do it. But if you've got access to uh, the rubber here, I think you're fine uh, to use that. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of the modeling clay. Now ah, let's just try the blue tack. Let's do it simple first. I'm going to put some blue tack under here, and we're just going to do a standing mold. Something simple. Now I should say, um, you know, when you're casting other people's parts for a kit like this, it's for your own use. It's for your own experimentation or replacements and all that. Um, it's just going to sit in the bottom here, and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Use the brush to get in there with the uh, with the blue uh, surface mold type uh, rubber, and then fill the rest of it up, and then we'll have a top mold for that. Um, I'm going to just uh, make sure there's no big gaps in there. What this will let you do is play around with all kinds of uh, clear re uh, clear resins if you want, um, different colors, all that kind of stuff. Um, his casting is, is excellent. Um, yours probably won't be as good, but it will let you play around some with some different painting techniques and such without wasting the good parts. Or without damaging the good part. So, um, the other part will be just like the uh, the first one we did earlier, and I will come back to that um, later. Hi everybody, back part two here. I did not like the way this um, first mold turned out for that little visor, so I'm going to make it again. This is also cured enough. The blue stuff has the uh, to. Um, put the other section on here. So I'm mixing up some more, doing the rolling again, you can see how there are cracks in it and that's why I'm rolling it, to kind of smooth all those cracks back together again. I'm going to save some for that, probably get a little bit more. That looks really nice. So I am going to push out another disc. Place it right over the, the piece here. Use another one of the same size to push it down and make a full mold out of it. Doesn't have to be thick, because that is just going to be a surface mold. You can see inside here how um, it kind of goes under a little bit, and that is absolutely fine. That'll provide a little bit of a well for us. Now that just sets aside to cure for a while. Meanwhile, the visor, I didn't push it down far enough, so there probably wouldn't have been enough of a, a well effect. Wow, this stuff's getting old. It's getting hard fast. So I'm going to push it down farther. That's ah, already too far cured. Oh well. We'll make it work. I'll do it again and um, come back in later. This stuff apparently as it gets old just cures really quickly. You can see it's already to the point where it is falling apart or uh, tearing as it breaks open. This cured up pretty nicely. Um, there's a little bubble there. I'm going to just slice that. It probably won't matter anyway. And then I will fill the rest of this thing with resin. I mean, with, with rubber. Um, it's probably got just enough space for me to, to work with as a mold. And that might use up most of the rest of my rubber. And I will come back once.